Hello, I'm William Gillian from Chromosol Limited, and I'm here to talk to you about what we're calling Silicon Photonics 2.0, the next generation of Silicon Photonics. I hope you're all aware that, uh, or you've heard of fibre to the home and fibre to the cabinet, and aware that every time you use the internet, data is transferred down optical fibres as pulses of light. What you may not be aware of is that actually there's an increasing drive to take that optical communications to all levels, all the way from chip to chip communication through to system. So that all optical communicate, all communications is done optically because not only is this faster, but it massively reduces the power requirements for data centers, etc. The technology that's generally adopted to use this is called silicon photonics. And this allows you to build integrated photonic circuits onto silicon chips in the same way that microelectronic circuits are built. And this allows you to leverage all the processing functionality that's been developed for the microelectronics world and use it for photonics. However, there is one major problem, and that is that silicon doesn't emit light. And hence, you've got to use external laser sources to provide the light. And this is something that I was working on in my PhD over 30 years ago, and it's still a problem. There isn't a solution to it. What is now done is essentially these uh, lasers have to be coupled uh, to those chips. And that requires precision alignment, submicron level alignment. And that, although it can be done, it's costly, complicated, and does have obvious yield issues. And hence, this means that this photonics isn't quite as broad as we would like it to be. Chromosol, our aim is to develop Silicon Photonics 2.0. And that is a way of integrating all this optical gain directly onto chips. And what we've done is we've used a novel chemical approach. So we've got a two compound system. We take a lanthanide iron, in our case, erbium, although we've patented for several others, and we encapsulate it in a perfluorinated molecule, which protects it from the environment and gives that iron a very high quantum efficiency, which means it works very well. But the key thing is we couple that with a separate iron, a separate molecule, which we call a chromophore. And this molecule is excellent at absorbing light and transferring the energy into the erbium. And we've patented this in the US and China, and we've got a patent pending in Europe. And what we've been doing over the last year is we've been getting some silicon photonic chips made with some relatively simple waveguides on them, depositing our material onto those, and our latest results have demonstrated a gain of about 5 dB per centimetre. And this, this was enough to get us our latest round of funding, which I'll tell you about later on. But our aim is to take this and go on to build integrated circuits. So here's a very simple schematic of what one of our chromosome devices would look like. All the black lines are the photonic circuit, which is built using standard lithographic techniques, the sort of things that can be done already. But the bit in purple is our material deposited on top, which allows us to get optical gain. So we can build our lasers directly onto the chip and we can put amplification onto the chip without any extra steps. And this is a platform technology. And what we're aiming at are data centers and metropolitan telecoms, but it's much broader than that. For example, autonomous cars will require LiDAR. And at the moment, there's a lot of work with people interested in building LiDAR using silicon photonics, but what they lack are the lasers, and we can solve that problem. There are also other applications, for example, in low-cost sensors, etc. So, where has Chromosol got to? Well, as I mentioned, this year we managed to raise another £500,000 in investment from IP Group and the Future Fund. And using this, we were able to get a 300k sustainable innovation grant from Innovate UK. And this is due to start next week. And this has allowed us to expand our team out. Also, because this technology is so exciting, we've actually been invited to join a major Horizon 2020 photonics grant with 13 major photonics companies and universities because they could see what Chromosol can do for their existing approach and the fact that we've got this novel way of actually putting gain directly onto the chips. So, as I've said, here's the team. We've got a chairman, Paul May, who's got over 30 years in silicon photonics. In fact, he was working in the 1980s at Intel on some of the first work on trying to actually put optical circuits onto chips. He was also the CTO of Cambridge Display Technology, so we've got experience in the organic side of it. And then our team of scientists includes Huang Qingyi, who's been working with me for many years, 
Uh, and he's been working on this technology for a long time, and he's the person who's done all the work over the last year to get us to the stage we are now. And now that we've expanded the team out, we realize that we need um, more chemists. So we've employed a synthetic chemist, Zach Parr, who will start with us uh, in January. Uh, and that's to make new materials and basically sort of develop the technology. We've employed a material scientist and we'll have an atomic layer deposition system arriving in November. And Claire is an expert on the encapsulation and passivation of organic materials using ALD. And that's because we know that organics are perceived as being sort of prone to damage. And we're going to take the technology that's been developed for OLEDs and apply it to our materials. And we're confident that we can get 1,000 to 10,000 hours of lifetime over the next year to two years. So we've also got photonics engineers and other people. So I hope that I've given you some idea of the excitement of Chromosol and where we're going. And welcome any questions that you have on what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.